think it will work in a minute ago. What if I... Oh, hello. I thought that was working. Have you broken it? Well, yes. It was working for a couple of weeks. And then we got a problem. I'll get down from here and explain. Right, here we go. These are a pain to get off. Okay, so since we were last here, things you could say haven't gone so well. The plus side of that is it's content for you guys and for the channel. Yay! Let me explain. Now, in the last video, I tasked myself with tidying up this monstrosity of wires. Everything was in place and everything worked for a few weeks just perfectly. But as you've seen by the thumbnail, it hasn't gone quite as well as that. Basically, I was carrying out a fuse change. We were upgrading our fuse to a fuse that we planned on using permanently. And from then on, the battery itself wouldn't come alive. The contactors wouldn't close. So we went back over some of the issues we'd had previously with some of the CAN bus information and it just didn't seem to be fixing it. I heard what sounded like some arcing from inside the battery and I then decided to remove the cover and I could smell it. I could smell an electronics type smell. The sort of smell that you don't want to smell in a big battery like this. So what exactly happened? Well, the guide for this tells you to keep a battery permanently connected. So in the Tesla vehicle, there will be a 12 volt battery or 16 volt, depending on the generation of the Model 3. And that is what initially powers to close the contactors. And this kind of acts as a buffer to open doors and to get the high voltage system supplying its power. Once it's done that, the board in the battery then supplies power back to that. But there's an issue with that potentially trying to output 16 volts because it expects a lithium battery. Because I've been running a 12 volt battery, I've been disconnecting that. We've also connected up this battery at least 100 times in testing. So between those two things, inside there, we have the PCS, Power Conversion System. This sits inside the battery and this is what we've managed to burn out. So when I finally discovered what was wrong, and worked out that we had some burnt out components. I sent these pictures on to a friend of mine who works in engineering, who's a little bit uh, anti-EV. I don't think he really is. He just finds it funny to wind me up with all that stuff. So he then replied with, is that how EV battery fires start? And I knew that would have to be the thumbnail of this video. To be honest, I don't know if this is just a one-off occurrence because of the way I'm setting things up, or if there is underlying issues with packs or whether I just happened to have one that was a bad one. Who knows? But there we are. On to the next bit, hey? I'll explain the job of this as well as some of the other things inside this area that we've had to learn about during this process. Now, every time I come into this office, I kind of chuckle because it has that slight smell of the burnt electronics. Bit of a reminder every time I'm in here that this mistake is very current. I mean, excuse the joke, because it was current probably that killed this. For those that know, it's possible that the V ref, the voltage reference was lost because I disconnected the power from it. So it then perhaps spiked its voltage at a different voltage and that's what killed the power. This is what Dala thinks, but to be honest, I don't know. I am impressed though by this board. It is heavy, partly down to the transformers and partly down to this aluminium plate, but flipping heck, isn't that thing impressive? There is a lot going on on this board. To think this has 12 volts, this has 400 volts DC, this has 400 volts AC at this end. There is a lot going on in here. There's even a little Pac-Man. There are two contactors that we're concerned about in this battery, our positive and our negative. They are able to detect whether they are open 
closed, or in a welded state. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so they're powered by 12 volts. Can we just supply 12 volts to them without the PCS board? Perhaps by some sort of contact or relays. Bearing in mind, this is actually something supported because this is how you do it with Nissan Leaf Packs with this project. Well, we tried it. Some of these janky wires here are part of my buck converter setup, along with a push switch in order for us to liven that up. And that is another issue. If you just supply these contactors with 12 volts forever, they ain't designed for that. Contactors like this have what's called an economizer circuit. Basically, it takes a lot more current to start it than it does to keep it held. And the coil that's built into this would pull five amps roughly per contactor. So two contactors at about five and a half amps each. You're talking 100, 120 watts just to keep the contactors closed. But that isn't even our full issue. The full issue is that's a lot of heat inside here. So I've discovered through speaking to some others that the economizer circuit for this then jumps those contactors down to about 1.3 amps per contactor. And doing this, those contactors will stay nice and cool as I have tried and they will operate just fine. Great. How do we do that? This is done on Nissan Leaf Packs and by pulse width modulation controlling a solid state relay, you can effectively turn on and off that contactor so fast that you're effectively giving it less power over time. I've done this with a buck converter that's set to 2.6 amps for both of them and an override switch to start them up, which jankily is just a push button on here. Okay, and that worked. Contact is closed, and with the BMS board in there, we're still able to see cell voltages, we're still able to see what the battery's doing, we're still able to measure current from the shunt, but we reached another problem and we would never have known this unless we tried. Okay, so our next problem is it worked. We were able to charge and discharge the battery through the inverter, but it became clear after just a few minutes that the percentage of the battery wasn't changing. There's something going on funny here inside the Tesla pack when it's not happy not being able to get all of the data. Maybe it's in some error mode and it's not expecting to see a rate of battery changing so it doesn't log it. I really don't know, but what it's told me is we've either got to find another way to, to monitor the current that's going in and out and then calculate our new state of charge. But to be honest, this isn't what I wanted for this project. I wanted this project to be a complete Tesla battery on a wall showing that that can work with a solar inverter and do its job. So that leaves us with a couple more options. It leaves us with a new PCS. Now in the UK, these seem to be incredibly rare. This part is double one, three, triple five, eight, 55 A. Now, if you can remember that part, there might be an opportunity for some people to help towards the end of this video. We need to find a way to make this battery work and work safely without this or with another one of these. Now, maybe as a last ditch attempt, there is somebody that can repair this board. The underside of here has burnt out components and I've not cleaned them yet to work out what even has gone wrong. And to be honest, it's because I don't really know what's gone wrong. But here we are. Here's our broken board. Surprisingly, these seem to be worth quite a lot of money. There's different revisions as well within software potentially, so it's a bit of a black art in finding the right one. Hmm. Now, maybe it is possible to find somebody who maybe knows somebody who could fix this. And if you have that ability or if you know somebody, drop some comments and maybe drop me an email too. I'm all up for ideas off you guys for this video. I'm a little bit stumped as to what to do. Maybe worst case scenario, this gets mounted to the wall as a decorative piece, as a memory of how this project cost me a lot of money and whether it was a good idea. But there we go. Maybe this is how EV battery fires start. Who knows? 
I ogle at this board with appreciation, but have absolutely no understanding. Enjoy. Okay, so yeah, if you know what we should do with this, let me know. Maybe we can at least put this water cooling block to some use in a completely different project in the future. Who knows? This is a pretty cool water cooling block. It is pretty thin, probably only a centimeter or two. I mean, if, if that, it's, it's incredibly thin. I wonder how many watts it's designed to dissipate. How much power is lost through this one to call him? Hmm. There's our burnt bits. Maybe just drop some positivity in the comments because this has been a little bit frustrating. I'm going to put this down. This is quite heavy. Another option is we could find a donor battery, maybe a battery that's not up to scratch. Maybe it's been damaged in such a way that most of the pack can't be used, but I might be able to take the PCS out of it and then we can make some more content around that battery. We'll explore that. Maybe we get a battery that's working and we work out some way to manually control that in the future while we get this battery set up working. Now, all of this is very frustrating to me, but at least it's good content for you. A broken component, well, that gives us way more videos in working out what we're doing with this. One good thing is, at least this thing is able to work with the solar that we have, even though it's the time of year now where we're not getting much solar, we've still got solar being input into it and we're still producing some power. Now, I think it's still worth getting on with some of the things that we can do to tidy up this project while we work out what we're going to do about making this battery live. Honestly, every day that goes by without this thing working, I'm getting so frustrated. But together, we'll come up with a solution, won't we? One of those solutions I mentioned before, or perhaps one that you've thought of. Anyway, so getting back to the project, the things that need detailing up, it's all of our Lilygo communication between the battery and inverter that's an absolute state. It's all in testing mode. So we've got to start running that on our cable tray. The first thing that I want to do though, is actually get rid of the Lilygo. Get rid of the Lilygo, how are we going to make that work? The Lilygo itself isn't our issue. The issue has been the additional CAN board that we've needed to go with it. The two together, I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel completely incompetent with any form of electronics. But I couldn't get them to pair consistently together. It could be as simple as I've messed something up with a connection, but it's only about seven pins and it really isn't that difficult. So I was getting frustrated with those issues. Now, we want a reliable system. So if we're not going to use the Lilligo, what's the next best option? I've gone with a Stark board. Now these are pricey and this in no way is sponsored and I've paid for this with my own money so I can be honest about what I think on it. And so far, it's great. It connects up and communicates with the battery first time, no issues. Now, bearing in mind, I haven't done much connecting up with the battery because we haven't really been putting it to much use, but it works. It's a very expensive ESP32 board. Inside here is basically everything that we've had on those two boards and more, but in a nice, neat DIN rail package. Being DIN rail mounted and far more approved than, say, a AliExpress Chinese board, this should make a much better long-term product. There's a guy that's put a lot of work into this who understands what the battery emulator needs and has provided a solution for this. That's probably why they're so expensive at the minute. This is just a batch product for now. Now there's loads of features that I perhaps don't even understand or maybe won't put to use, but some that I will put to use is you can supply this with a range of voltages, which means I no longer need a buck converter 
to power my Lilligo and separate MCP board. This board needed five volts, which meant that I was supplying that from a buck converter that powered both of those boards at five. Anyway, I don't need to do that anymore. We have that built in. It also has 12 volts out, which means that all of my BMS power can then go onto the battery itself and power up the BMS from this device, which means all of our battery connections, our power, our communication can come into this enclosure and it will make a nice, neat solution. I wanted something DIN mounted. I'd even 3D printed a case for the Lilligo, but yeah, with those other issues, this is gonna be a lot easier. This has multiple CAN channels, which is exactly what we need. So with our new board and enclosure, we can get mounting these together on the wall and make that nice and neat and protected from the elements and the weather. So let's enjoy a time lapse of that. One thing you can be certain of, this battery will live. We will get this thing working one way or another, and of course, safely. As I said, my aim of this project was to show a working Tesla Model 3 battery attached with a hybrid solar inverter and doing its job and working as if it was a pack that came out of an EV. So to me, getting a PCS working, power conversion system working is our way forward. Thank you all for watching this video. If you have a potential solution to some of the problems that I've mentioned in this video, please drop me a comment. Tell me in the comments how stupid I am for putting an electric vehicle battery on my house and how much simpler my life would have been if I'd have just stuck normal batteries on. Hey, but hey, that's not what this channel is about and that's not what projects like these are for. This is so that you don't have to do this and you can just watch some guy do it on the internet while you just relax and enjoy a cup of tea, and enjoy YouTube. Battery man out. Why not relax and put on another battery man video? Ah. Being din mail. Ah, what have I done? A series of life's poor mistakes, and this is just the latest one. Ah. Oh, I thought you'd gone. Bye.